It's not buzz unless it's got buzz in it. Yeah, this is no game to a voice of the poor show. Well, um, I'd like to welcome you out with the Honorable Wally Scott. Hello. Hello, God Buzz Inc. <laughs> buzz Inc. What can I do for you today? All right, well, we just have a couple of questions we want to ask you know about Wally Scott. Like, how was life growing up as a kid for Wally Scott? I loved it. It was, uh, it was a different time, a different era. As you know, most people know, we're at Vernia Colleges today. I was originally put in there when I was seven months old, okay. and I came out of there when I was seven or eight years old, okay. and it turned into a college. Right. And uh, then I was moving, uh, I moved in with my mother and father, who I met for the first time at that time, and uh, good people, you know, it was uh, just a great life. I got to know everybody in the neighborhood. Okay. It was a time when people respected each other. and. Okay. Uh, there was a lot going on in neighborhoods where you knew your neighbor, right. and uh, people help neighbors. Today, you're not sure who's moving in where, and right. you want to be careful. You can't invite people into your house like you did years ago, right? Correct. Because uh, you just, uh, you know, there's an old saying that in the mind of everybody, there's a different world. Right. So you got to be very careful what you do. Right. Okay. How was life as a childhood? Would you say it was a good life for you, or would you say it was a bad life, or would you say it was like in between? Because you know, as churches, we have good life, and some of us had bad lives. So how was life as a childhood? Would you say? Well, I worked all my life. Okay. And, and when I left the uh, when I came out of the orphanage. They had the old market houses on Penn Street that I worked there. I made good money too. Okay. And I was maybe nine years old, oh, nine, right. ten oh, years right. old, oh, right. and uh, I worked at, uh, across the street was a hosiery shop, okay. Swigert Hosiery, I remember. Okay. And that was on Penn Street was the uh, Kissinger Markets. That was okay. good. Okay. And you had the old Mohegan Market there. I worked at a mall. I did a lot of cleanup. Okay. And uh, I. Uh, my, my first good job was shoveling snow. Oh, okay. I and, used to uh, do that too as a kid. Yeah, I, used to, uh, I used to have all the corner properties. Okay. When you did the whole property, you got four bucks. Okay, okay. And the whole property, you, you'd be dead after that. <laughs> right. Uh, but people were good. What a little guy couldn't do, they, the guy that owns the place would come out and help you get through it. Okay. But uh, different world, just a different world. Okay. Was it ever a time, like, in your life where you said you didn't believe in yourself and you felt like you couldn't succeed and get accomplish your dreams, like pursue your dreams? Well, I... Uh, I, I was a person who did many journeys. Okay. Okay, and it's like the seasons, you know, the seasons of your life where you can be one place at one time and then something comes up. I've always found though that God puts me where I am. Okay. And I figured that while I'm thinking about something, it's already happening. Oh. Right. And you're going to be there. Okay. And you just have to believe that you, you know, you have a purpose in life, and that you're not just passing through. I always loved being a public servant. Okay. Uh, I liked helping people. Um, just, I, I can't tell you, I had a great life. I, okay. mm -hmm. I'm happy with, you know, things. That are, but you really got to put everything in God's hand. Right, right. And when it comes to challenges that you can't do, just okay. remember, somebody's doing them for you. Right. Um, what do you think, as a community, we can do to become a better community and show more love and peace and unity amongst mm -hmm. each other? I think we have to be a community that wants to share. We definitely have to share. We have to share our dreams, too. Yes. Of what we'd like to be so that the stranger you meet gets a little glimpse of who you are mm -hmm. and talks to you about, oh, wow, well, you know, I always thought when I was a kid I wanted to do so and so, or I always wanted to do this, but this is where I'm at. Yeah. But you'll find that everybody's where they're at at the right time. Yes. And that all the things that you dream of uh, that you want to do, you never want to stop. I uh, When I ran for mayor, I put a on my flyer that I put out, I says, in Reading, if you can dream it, we have artists that can draw it. Mm. If you can see it, we can do it. Right. And I've always stuck with that. And I get people enthusiastic about it. I wrote a, I write a Christmas book every year. I wrote one called The Children's Tree this year. And inside of it talks about how you uh, make a, you make a company from nothing. Okay. But you have to remember how that company was made because in America today, as it gets passed down through the generations, mm -hmm. the new people or the people that it hurt want the money. 
They don't want to be bothered with the unions. They don't want to be bothered with personnel. And they forgot the dream of how their great great grandparents. Facts, that's so true. I always tell everybody, pass your dreams down regardless how big or how small. All right, dreams. that goes on to my, I don't mean to cut okay. you off, I'm sorry. sorry. That goes on to my next question. I want to ask you, do you think money and resources play a big part in success? Like with anything you're trying to pursue in your life, like, you know, because you have to learn about, you know, the business side too, as well as you don't have a passion for it. I think that money is a big factor to that. Right. Okay, getting into things. Mm -hmm. um, those who have it don't want to give it. Yes. Okay. True. And those who have it want to take what you have. Mm -hmm. And that's how they, they go with everything. I find myself in a city where I, fought, I feel like I'm fighting for the powerless against the rich or the, the mighty. Yeah, like the and, poor uh, versus the rich, yeah. basically. But yeah. I've discovered that through life, that what you have to do is you can't fight for the, for the powerless. You have to inspire them to fight against the mighty. Mm, and if you, if you empower them and you show them how to do it, it can happen. But where, what's happening is your media and everything, especially in this little town, right. they control it all. Yes. And you can have the best idea in the world, and if they could write something negative about you, they will. True. And uh, I take a look at, like, uh, we have the Double Tree Garage down there. Yeah. I'm fighting to get that back because it belongs to the people of City Hood. We lose $1.4 million a year there just oh, in wow. vouchers, and they talk about their success, but they never thank the people for what they have. Oh, okay. And that, okay. that's something I don't believe in. Okay. And uh, I believe by the end of uh, December into January, we'll have possession of it. But I'm fighting the rich and the mighty. Okay, okay. But they're not mightier than the, the people themselves because it doesn't matter how much money you have and how strong you think you are. Mm -hmm. If you don't have truth on your side, mm -hmm. you will lose. But the little guy has to make sure that he keeps fighting for the truth. Don't compromise. Mm -hmm. Keep moving ahead. Damn. And whether you look bad or you look good in the public, right. just remember who you are. Yes. And if it all turns out in the end, makes up for what you're for. I want to ask you, you know, um, it's a lot of, you know, things that's going on in the city right now, mm -hmm. you know, negative-wise in the city. I just wanted to ask you, like, what can we do as residents and cities to come together and bring the peace, you know, because there's a lot of violence going on in the city, and I feel like a lot of people and residents in the city want to know, like, what we can do to work with politicians and mayor to come together to try to, like, bring some peace and love to the city and like try to stop the violence? With politicians, I would tell you the biggest fault that politicians have is they only want to listen and like you when they need to. Mm, makes sense. 100%. I don't care who it is. Right. Bad ones. I agree. Real public servants, you used to be proud to say you were a politician, you were a public servant. Right. Today, though, you get marked because of everything that's happening wrong around you. Mm. The biggest thing with uh, how we can make a difference is this. I, I was reading in a paper the other day, the district attorney says that the people have to be more outspoken about what takes place. Well, it's very hard to be outspoken if when something minor happens, you go for help from police and then they go to the house that you're reporting saying you reported them. Right. So when something mad, really bad happens, if they'll report you for that, to who you're reporting. Right. Imagine what they'll do, or what you think they'll do to right. drug dealers. Right. When people are fighting who are not conscious of the reality, mm -hmm. uh, they can hurt you. Facts. And you have to take a look at that. Uh, we don't have a lot of policemen, but it wouldn't matter if we had a thousand. Right. If people want to commit murder, they'll commit murder. That's right. what it's right. And I, I always try to think to myself when I was on the bench, too, you know, you have your good and your bad. Yeah. But you bad. know what? Our mothers love us all. Yes. Yeah, and you have to listen to the mother. The mother has to tell you who the kid is and what took place and what happened that was wrong. And there's a penalty for all wrong things. Yes, it is. And you have to be willing to accept that penalty, but you can never forget the fact that we're all here together. Yes. And every one of us, even those who commit murder and get murder, have a mother. Yes. And those mothers will fight for you till the day they die. Right. They and which is good. Them. They love their son. They yes. know who their son is or their daughter. And I used to sit there and I just used to say to myself, Maybe the best thing I can tell you is where your son is right now. It's probably the best place he could be, or where yeah. your daughter is. Maybe and you saved them. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I think that's the hardest thing that people uh, don't fear God anymore. Yeah. Uh, murders are done in a split 30 seconds sometimes, yeah. maybe in 10 seconds. It's done with emotion. You have TV where uh, you watch episodes and people die in them and then the next episode they're back. Right. So people, I, I never forget I had a hearing uh, on 8th Street and they had these young men who threw sneakers over a thing and they stole and uh, took a person's life for a pair of sneakers. And they were in my courtroom kept looking around and it was amazing that, you know, mom was the only one that showed up for him. But I said, is that what they're looking for, their mother? And, uh, the one uh, mother said to me, no. She said, I can't get it out of my son's head yeah. that the person you killed isn't going to walk in this courtroom. Right, right. Wow, what a strong statement. Right, that is. So they believe that they see life in, uh, in a half hour. Oh, and then wow. they see another life in a half hour. Right. And they look at it like that, and they don't think. And they, they're caught in their environment. Mm -hmm. And once you give them something that takes any kind of a mood control over their brain, uh, they're no longer them. But could the, would all of them regret what they did? I would say not all, but the majority would. Yeah. And uh, I'm sympathetic, not to people being murdered or anything. That I'm sympathetic to mankind. Yes. And that uh, why we're in a wild uh, time right now. Yes, we are. And, I agree. And the thing, and you know, everybody says, well, God didn't want you to have it. He wouldn't allow you to make it. Right. Well, God does give you everything. Right. But he also gives you the right to think about what you're doing. You have a and choice. You make your choice. Yeah. Well, there you go. You have a choice. And uh, so you have to look at it and you have to, if you see that it's bad, you should be there fighting it. Right. Not be buying it. You've got to be fighting it. Right. How important, I don't want to cut you off, I'm sorry about that, but how important do you think that the family structure and the community affects the people in the community? Like how important is family to you and like families in the community? Only one thing I can say, if you have a family, never give up on them. That's all. Never give up. All right, all right. Live your dreams. And make sure your mom and your dad... Buzz in. ...in order to get a dream going. But always remember, you have to have a source of employment. Yeah. Yes, that'd be good employment, not vice versa. It takes money to make money. <laughs> and then uh, go and crawl. As you go along and yeah. walk and get where you can go, go to the different levels and find people that think like you mm. and find people that are reaching out there looking for uh, the goodness in life, not the worst. Right. And uh, and I know it all sounds rosy, right. and it isn't. But you're looking at a man that's in his late 60s, okay. and I can look back over my life knowing that I have less years in front of me and more right. behind me. Right. So my suggestion would always be have faith in God. Realize that there's something out there greater than you are. Right, and when you take, And when you take that split second where you think you are in power, drop to your knees and just say, oh, God, help me. Right. That's all. Right. And, you know, it sounds funny to say that, but you can do that anywhere. There's nobody that won't respect right. a person on their knees asking for help. Right. Okay, what are some hobbies that Wally Scott like to do in his spare time? I like to write. You like to write? I write I'm a writer, plays, too. I write plays. I write songs. I, I know you. Uh, I see that you wrote a couple of books too. Yeah, I do that. All right. I like Christmas. It was the best time of my year I of see my that. life when I was in the North Face. So. I see how you do. You know, you do the Christmas thing with the kids in the community. I really respect you for that. Like you, t you know, you um, involve yourself with the youth in the community, and I always respected you about that yeah, on Ninth Street. Thank you. Man. You're welcome. You never know who's in need until they show up. Yes. And when they do show up, it's pretty basic what everybody needs. Right. They just need one day or one moment to feel great. Right, right. That's all. Right. I have one more question for you. Um, what, like, what things that we can do to bring more small businesses to Reddit and then bigger, build a bigger marketplace for Reddit? Well, I would say that right now Reading is loaded with small businesses. It really loaded is. Loaded with bodegas, yeah. barber shops, nail mm -hmm. shops, beauty shops, notary shops. We have more than we've ever had here before. And everybody's doing business. Right. Okay. Right. So one thing is certain. In Reading here, if you've got a dream, the people in Reading will support your dream. Right. All you got to do is get your store open, get going, whatever it is that's on your mind. Yeah. I think the government could offer you better grants. Right. Uh, we have money, but uh, council controls 
of who they're going to allow me to spend it with okay. so they won't give me that privilege so they want me to get a bank okay. and then you go to a bank and then you hear the horror stories of eight nine percent interest and we say wait a minute we, we got to stop. You're not helping them when they're mighty rich. Right. Can get all the grants they never have to pay back. Right. They get loans at two percent interest, and they default. Wow. Okay. Before I came here, there was millions of dollars of this. I cut off the Correct money. money. I cut off the money stream, mm -hmm. and I started to say, "Look, you have to give back something to the people of City of Reading. Let me give you one thing that will make us sustain ourselves forever. Mm -hmm. These." non-taxable uh, non zones and everything. Yeah. When they were put on, they pay no property tax. Right. Little guy has to pay it, he loses his home. He can lose his home for anything if he right. can't afford the taxes. But the big people who go for 10 years with no taxes, the government never put together a program that when the economic situation of a city changes, mm -hmm. that we should have an escape clause that allows us to tax them then for the rest of, uh, for the rest of the journey. Yeah, it's like the rich, we don't have the rich get rich and the oh, poor get poor. Like, that's a story in itself. Right, right. And the rich today that are here, there are rich that help. Yeah, yeah. But these people that got rich, got rich on our money. Yeah. Got rich on our community development. Right, our plus what it takes. On our low interest loans, right. on our, uh, our cap money. Mm -hmm. Get rich from a governor, who I like, mm -hmm. that gives money to the rich who don't need it to keep building what they want. When we, could you know, for a million dollars, I probably could do two blocks, the facades, more than that, in a city. Wow. Where we go out and clean them up and stuff. So right. I have a lot of complaints about it. I do think we got the right governor. Though. Right. That other guy was a madman. Tom Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. The other guy was a madman. Right. So Tom Wolf, I think, tries it. One thing that's nice is that he listens. Okay. Now, he can only be governor two terms. So yeah. maybe now he'll start sharing the money with us. Right. Right. Instead of going to be because he doesn't owe nothing. For oh, okay. okay. Makes sense. Scott, for yep. everything. Thank you. you know, taking time out. I like that. Time. It's not buzz unless it's got buzz. In it.